biochemical weapons in the near future bring about a catastrophe that renders the air unbreathable. The U.S. president repeatedly states that his citizens come first in interviews, despite persistent allegations that scientists would be hidden in secret bunkers. The country's most influential and intelligent scientists are placed in cryogenic slumber in subterranean bunkers to wait until the air is no longer hazardous after this disaster eventually wipes off the majority of mankind. These bunkers are numerous, and two engineers who wake up for two hours once every six months maintain them. The engineers at this specific institution are Bauer and Cartwright, and Bauer always awakes first. He gets a little queasy, but he gets over it fast, unlike Cartwright, who due to his claustrophobia usually wakes up with nightmares. Before ultimately allowing him to exit his tank, a distinct design from the others, Bauer teases him for a time. Then both guys start doing maintenance duties, which includes signing on to the computer to alert other facilities that they are still operational. Even though there is no way for the bunkers to communicate with one another, Cartwright is happy to find that other bunkers are doing well as well. They also examine the air above the surface, but regrettably it remains poisonous. Pictures of their former lives are posted on a board in their room, and Bauer loves to tape the word, dead, to the faces of their pals to serve as a reminder of the outside world. Cartwright, however, despises this practice and always takes the tape off. Cartwright becomes concerned when he learns there has been seismic activity due to the possible harm it may have caused as the engineers keep checking the data on the computers. They agree that Cartwright will check on them since Bauer is frightened by the sleepers. Cartwright uses the opportunity to look at a photo he's concealed under a board while Bauer enters a hallway to make repairs. However, he quickly turns around when he hears Abby. Cartwright has this hallucination about the lady he loves, and he doesn't mind talking to her when he's by himself. Cartwright checks on the sleepers after stowing the photo in his pocket and discovers Abby is one of the scientists there. While Cartwright performs the diagnostic, her hallucination appears next to her tank. She demands that Cartwright inform Bauer about her, but Cartwright says he will wait until the appropriate moment. At that point, Bauer joins him and starts whining about the sleepers, believing it to be a waste of their time and life to watch over a man who is knowledgeable about reptiles. Cartwright has estimated that the scientists will continue to sleep for 20 more shifts since he genuinely believes they represent the future of civilization. After finishing their tasks, the pair spend their remaining time playing chess, watching old TV shows, and Bauer even goes on a date with Manuela in the restroom. Until Abby sees Cartwright once again, she expresses her excitement to see him until he falls asleep. Even though he has entered the tank several times, Cartwright still gets anxious since it always makes his claustrophobia worse. Cartwright notices flames on Abby's body as she attempts to console him, at which point he understands his tank is on fire. He quickly calls Bauer, who emerges from the restroom with the extinguisher. Although the sleeping pod is now completely destroyed and Bauer has hurt his hand in the process, the fire was effectively put out. It becomes worse since the two hours are up at that point, which means the air supply and lights are turned off. The engineers study the instructions with the help of their torches and the little air that is still in the space. After learning that there is an emergency override, they go up the stairs to the appropriate chamber. The two hurriedly open the emergency air supply valve, then they go back to the office to wait for the backup air to reach them. They converse about their lives as they wait, and Bauer reveals that he formerly had a wife and three girls, but that he had to lie to get the position due to the unique criteria. Cartwright claims that even though he doesn't have a family, he understands since Bauer had to see how the government trapped him in the bunker while leaving his family outside to perish under false pretenses. The clock then reads them two more hours when the electricity finally returns and the air supply is restored. Even though the instruction states that spare pods exist, the engineers search the warehouse for one but are unable to locate any. Cartwright examines the bunker layout, which has a number of codes he doesn't understand, after realizing that this could not be the only storage. Additionally, there is a chamber called long-term storage. That is shut up and normally not covered, but Cartwright thinks the spares are there. The group breaks the barrier and proceeds down a hallway they have never seen before, eventually coming to a door. Cartwright discovers a malfunctioning security camera in a locker room behind it, which is strange given that their system isn't connected to this space. It's most likely a holdover from the period that this location served as a military installation, according to Bauer. Cartwright encounters Abby again while looking around farther within. She helps him discover the box where the extra pod is by guiding him there. Cartwright's tank is promptly repaired, but he remains hesitant to go inside. As soon as Bauer lies down to try it out, 
he realizes there must be a leak since the air within is growing thinner. Bauer is immediately sucked down by the chamber while Cartwright checks the pump, smothering him until he stops writhing in agony. Finally arriving, Cartwright cuts the pod to release Bauer just as he is about to expire. Bauer violently shoves Cartwright away, believing that he is trying to kill him, but Cartwright explains that he was held up because he couldn't locate a knife to open the pod. Additionally, Cartwright points out that it ought to have been him, which persuades Bauer that it was an accident. Bauer determines they must murder one of the sleepers in order to utilize their tank in its place because Cartwright's pod has already been destroyed. When Cartwright tells him that it is their responsibility to care for the sleepers, Bauer reconsiders, pointing out that if they are dead, no one can provide such care. Abby arrives and urges Cartwright not to do the euthanasia while stating that it is as easy as ABC. Cartwright is preparing to inject the patient with morphine for the procedure. Cartwright says he can't kill someone after having an idea and Bauer instantly starts to argue that this is about survival. Then Bauer starts beating him, but Cartwright pushes him away and tells him to give his idea a chance while threatening to inject him. Bauer accepts with a discouraged attitude. After the pair gets back to the office, Cartwright notices that the strange codes on the blueprint match those on the computer, indicating that each code corresponds to a different underground facility that could contain more spare components. Cartwright is ready to take the chance but Bauer feels it's too risky because they can't tell whether there are air leaks between the facilities. Then Cartwright dons a hazmat suit to ensure clean air and a radio to stay in touch with Bauer, who will direct him by tracking him on the surveillance cameras. Bauer will give guidance. He is surprised to see a skeleton on the ground in the first corridor, whose uniform and weapon indicated it was formerly a soldier. With barely 30 minutes remaining, Bauer starts repairing some outdated monitors in the office while Cartwright continues exploring the dim tunnels. There, he discovers a lot of blue dust floating around from the airborne pollutant. Cartwright eventually emerges on the outdated security cameras after some time of strolling, and Bauer starts properly identifying the fixed monitors. Cartwright eventually comes upon a door with a sign identifying this as the ABC facility. Cartwright enters after fumbling with the stuck latch and is astonished to find that nothing is functional. Cartwright starts to lose hope when he can't unlock the next door, and Abby seems to be pleading with him to keep trying. Bauer then thinks of a solution. Cartwright can climb into the ABC building through the air duct. Cartwright instantly has claustrophobia, but he suppresses it out of concern for his safety. He is mortified to find that there are several dead in this area as well and that he must crawl over them as he advances down the duct. Bauer loses touch with Cartwright as he descends farther down the duct, so he chooses to use some instruments to strengthen the signal. But when he goes to get his toolbox, he finds that Cartwright could have been lying because his knife was already inside. He double-checks the surveillance tape just to be sure and is horrified to see that Cartwright was idly standing close to the tank when he choked. After arriving to the ABC facility, Cartwright's radio starts to function once more. He looks around and sees that the institution is in utter disrepair and that there are no survivors. Additionally, there is a hole in the ceiling that Cartwright uses to peek outside, where he finds that the earth has long since been destroyed by nuclear bombs. The rooms of the sleeper are the next thing he examines, but they have also been demolished. When Cartwright eventually understands that the computer's display of everything as functioning normally was a fiction intended to maintain the engineer's sanity and give them hope that they aren't alone, he becomes upset. Bauer remarks that they can no longer trust anyone and reapplies the dead tape to the board. Cartwright keeps looking and eventually realizes that his facility is the only one operating, which means they are by themselves. Cartwright notices he's running short on air and starts sprinting back to his own facility as Abby arrives to let him know he isn't alone. As soon as Cartwright enters the last corridor, Bauer appears on the opposite side of the door holding out his knife and pointing out his friend's fabrication while Cartwright undergoes the decontamination procedure. Cartwright asserts that he can explain, but suddenly Bauer declares that he stole the soldier's gun and that Cartwright is a threat to him and the sleepers, thus he must be killed. Cartwright rushes back inside the ABC facility out of desperation and fear, but he is having problems running since the air is running out. When Abby arrives, she instructs him to return to the air duct since there is another route he may follow. Through the radio, Bauer chastises Cartwright for his treachery and warns him that if he doesn't return soon, he will shortly pass away. Cartwright simply ignores him and continues on his journey until he discovers a route that leads him back to his own facility, where he swiftly takes off his suit to breathe normally once again. Then, when he makes an attempt to go back to the office, 
Bauer unexpectedly spots him and starts shooting. Fortunately, the bullet misses the shadows, and Cartwright returns to cover behind the door. Because Bauer is worried that Cartwright may assassinate him while he is sleeping, he ignores Cartwright's appeals and his reminders that they are the only survivors. Bauer uses his radio to try to locate Cartwright using his own communicator. But when he follows the echo, he finds that Cartwright had left his radio and flashlight behind to deceive him. Cartwright rushes to the hospital to obtain some morphine in the meanwhile, locking the door behind him. He's not sure if he should murder a close friend, but Abby persuades him that if he doesn't, Bauer would kill him first and their future as a couple is lost. When Cartwright returns after preparing the injection, Bauer has already opened the door and entered. He makes meticulous attempts to move covertly, but is caught off guard by a shot to the shoulder. As Cartwright offers Bauer his secret photograph, Bauer draws closer as he struggles with having to kill a guy he considered family. Cartwright attempts to explain that he did it to protect his beloved. After that, he begins speaking to Abby, which enrages Bauer since it sounds insane. Cartwright makes use of this decoy to leap on Bauer, forcing him to drop the pistol, but misses and flees into the sleeping chamber. When Bauer retrieves his rifle again, he notices that something in the photo on the floor appears familiar. He runs to the sleeping people and discovers that Cartwright has been lying more than he initially believed. Abby is Cartwright's wife, and that is the sole explanation for his concern for the sleepers, it turns out. Furious, Bauer threatens to murder Abby to get his buddy to come out, but Cartwright catches him off guard by sneaking up behind him and giving him a morphine shot on the shoulder. Cartwright resists Bauer's attempt to shoot him, and the morphine takes effect, causing Bauer to collapse to the ground in agony. Cartwright wants to assist him, but Bauer tells him that there isn't much time left, and that he should get some rest in order to continue caring for his daughter. Cartwright returns to the workplace and falls asleep in Bauer's room just before the timer approaches zero. Cartwright sees an illusion of Bauer using the chest set just before passing out. After a protracted period of cryosleep, the sleepers ultimately emerge from their condition and start to assess the situation of the world. Cartwright is now an elderly guy, as Abby finds while looking for him, but she still gives him a hug, 